So this uh, presentation, I think, will be, I hope, will be useful to PhD students because, uh, uh, as you know, this is one of the main tasks of PhD students to produce. And the way to show that you are producing, that's one of the most important ways is to publish a paper. So hopefully that uh, this presentation can be useful uh, for you. So the firm local presentation is the, as you will see, I will first introduce manuscript preparation, then the, the step of manuscript publication, uh, uh, manuscript revision step, and finally manuscript de dissemination. So for the manuscript preparation, so possibly the, 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 the first year PhD students are not aware about this, but second year or third year that maybe already published papers, they know the way an original research paper is organized. So this is the, the outline of an original research paper. You can find uh, in the typical guidelines of uh, index uh, journals. So index journals are the journals where are impact factors, and so they are indexed. And so you can see that you have the title page, the abstract, the keywords, the introduction, material and methods, the results and discussion, conclusion, acknowledgements, and references. So for some papers, uh, journals, you also have some variation. For instance, uh, some have, can have uh, different paragraphs for results and discussion. Some journals do not have, for instance, environmental science and technology does not have any conclusion paragraph so normal to merge conclusion in a result and discussion. So the title of the page, the, you should take into account that normally the title should be as short as possible. Uh, in, normally the use of acronyms is not recommended, so it should be avoided in the manuscripts. Uh, should be arranged according to the journal uh, type. I mean, uh, if you are working on uh, an applica environmental application of a photocatalytic process and you are submitting the paper to a more environmental oriented paper, you should organize the title in a way that better fit the environmental paper aims. If you would like to submit the same paper to a photocatalytic oriented or material science oriented paper, the title should be also focused differently because the aim of the paper are different. So maybe in the first case, you should more stress the environmental issue in the title and in the manuscript, in the applied the uh, in the science or material science uh, journal, you should more focus the title on the photocatalytic issue. Uh, then you should try to emphasize in a few words, if possible, the novelty of the manuscript in the title you uh, submit. For instance, maybe it could be uh, better to be less generic possible in the title I don't know, if you investigated uh, one specific contaminants of emerging concern, it could be useful, in particular, is if these contaminants has been f uh, just poorly investigated, to put the name of the contaminant in the title. Or if you investigated a new advanced oxidation process, or a new catalyst, maybe it's better to emphasize in the title, okay? And uh, then in the title page, you, you for sure you have also to introduce the, the authors and their affiliation, and this is most important, so the, the order of the authors. So normally, in the most cases, the PhD students is also the students that perform the most important part of the work and also uh, write the papers. So normally the PhD students is the first author, and uh, normally the, the supervisor of the PhD students uh, is the last author and is obviously the corresponding author. Then what, about the abstract, the abstract should summarize in a few lines the, the main uh, uh, part of your work, so should briefly introduce the introduction to the, to the environmental problem, for instance, the novelty of your work, the experimental procedures and methods, the main results possibly supported by figures, by numbers, 
and the, the main conclusion, okay? And you should for sure check the guidelines of the journal because they have different guidelines, for instance, about the maximum words of the abstract. About the keywords, you should select uh, a limited number of keywords that you will provide even when you will submit the, the, the paper to the journal. And even in this case, you should check the journal guidelines because maybe somebody asks you for uh, five keywords or other more than five. And uh, you should choose words that clearly focus the topic and not statements, not uh, phrase. You should possibly avoid duplication of words that you already given in the title. This will give you more chance to be found through a database when people look for papers if you put different words from the title to the keywords, the, uh, the tool system looks for words, the keywords in the title and the, in the abstract. So this will give more chance to your paper to be selected. Uh, possibly you should avoid duplication of words, as I told you, and to avoid uh, two generic keywords that are, I don't know, if we put waste water treatment can be quite generic. If it is... Uh, Photocatalytic treatment is more specific, is it heterogeneous catalysis is more specific, specific and so on. Uh, then normally when you submit your paper, you, this also include highlights and uh, graphical abstract. Highlights consist of uh, a short collection of bullet points. Even in this case, the guideline of Jonas explain you what is the maximum number of words or characters for each highlight. And uh, the graphical ab abstract should summarize the contents of uh, your manuscript in a concise way. And uh, then even in this case, you can have some guidelines from the, the journal, the specific journal. So this is the, a paper that you can see. And in this case, you can see the title. So you can see the part with the authors and the affiliation. You have the keywords, the abstract, the highlights and graphical abstracts. Uh, then we have the, the introduction of the paper. In this case, you are expected to have an overview and the relevance of the environmental issue. If it is the scopus, the main scopus of the journal is the uh, environmental aspect, uh, according to the international literature. So you should. Uh, introduce the state of art with regard to the approaches, processes, technologies used to address the target issue problem. So I will show you some example. You should explain the possible drawbacks and limitation of the available processes, processes and technologies. This will help you to introduce, to better introduce the novelty of your work. So if you clearly explain the state of art, and the limitation and drawbacks of the state of art, this will be useful to better introduce the novelty of your work. Uh, description for sure of the objectives of your work, briefly, and uh, even a short description of the methodologies or approach of your work. So this is an introduction section, for instance. So in this part, this paper was on advanced treatment of urban wastewater by UV radiation and we investigated the effect on antibiotics and antibiotic-resistant E. coli. So in this part, we have an overview in the first part of the problem of antibiotics and antibiotic resistance into the environment. In the second part, we introduce the state of art of wastewater treatment and the limitation of the consolidated processes and technologies. In this part, we introduce the novelty. What was the novelty of the manuscript in terms of the effect of UV radiation on antibiotic resistant bacteria and genes? And in this last part, we explain the objective of our work and the approach we use to finalize uh, the work. Then we have the materials and methods section. And uh, this should be organized in subparagraphs. Uh, sometimes this is also a requirement of the journal. Uh, experimental procedure and design should be clearly explained. The characteristic of environmental matrices investigated should be explained. For sure, if, if you just perform a lab 
test with the synthetic solution, you don't have this section, but if you worked on real water matrices, you have to explain where did you collect the sample, the water samples, or where's the water samples, and so on. Uh, you should explain the materials and equipment, uh, including the procedure, uh, the analytical methods, and uh, sometimes if, if you are consolidated or uh, standardized method, it is sufficient to provide the, 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 the standard method reference. On the opposite, if you have new methods to measure new contaminants, and so the procedure was developed by you for the first time, you have to provide the details about these analytical methods. And so this is an example as well. So in this case, uh, we have in the first part, we described the, the upper part of the chemical, so all the reagents we use in the experiment. Then we work on the real wastewater, so the second subparagraph was wastewater samples, and when we explain where we take in the, the wastewater samples, and we provide information about the wastewater treatment plant and the characteristic of wastewater collected. Then in this paragraph, we explain the way we selected the antibiotic-resistant bacteria because we worked on, on uh, uh, on bacteria selected from the wastewater samples, so we explain the way we selected, and then we explain the way we performed the inoculum to the wastewater sample, uh, because we sterilized the wastewater samples, and then we inoculated the wastewater just with the strain that we had selected in the previous step. Then we explain the the different tests that we perform, we perform the UV test, so we explain the way, we perform also chlorination test, and finally, normally the analytical part and the measurements are the last part of material and methods uh, section, and so in this case we explain bacterial count and the antibiotic resistance and assay, assays, and finally the analytical measurements. So the results and discussion part, uh, this, as I told you, depending on the journal, this can be just uh, one uh, paragraph where you explain the result and discuss the results simultaneously, or sometimes they can be different paragraphs. So uh, it is really important that you not only explain the results, but that you uh, discuss the result according to the scientific, relevant, and updated literature. Because you have to show the way your work is novel and you can do only if you compare and discuss the results you achieved with the relevant and updated literature. This is one of the most important tasks and it is sometimes quite difficult for PhD students the first time that they approach this uh, task. Um, okay. So the way is it, the same example, so you have the, the different paragraphs, we organize according to the, the different sections, so the effect of the process on the inactivation of bacteria, so the effect of different processes, and the effect of, uh, on antibiotic uh, resistant bacteria, and so we discuss it inside uh, each paragraph, and we compare it with the relevant literature. The uh, final uh, section is a conclusion section, one of the typical mistakes when uh, young uh, uh, researchers prepare conclusion section is that they limit their conclusion to just a summary of the main results. Actually, this is just a part of the conclusion, it's not sufficient. After you summarize your main result, you have explained the actual conclusion, see, which means what is the impact of your work on, in, on a scientific point of view, what are the difference compared and the way that you advanced the knowledge compared to the already published work. So in this case, for instance, this is the summary of the results and this is the actual conclusion that we provide. So sometimes you can see uh, in, man in other manuscripts published that in this case, no, I put this is examples that they put simply the main results that they have achieved, but this is not sufficient at all. So then we have the acknowledgement part. So why should acknowledgement be included? So why? Because normally the project where we work to are uh, funded. And so we have to acknowledge the funding agency first. 
and we have to acknowledge even who collaborated uh, or supported us in the, in the preparation of our work. So, uh, sorry. Uh, the acknowledgement paragraph is normally put after the conclusion, so you explain the, the, the funding agency and uh, also if you have other people to acknowledge inside the, the system. So the manuscript submission, actually, uh, possibly this is a, a task that uh, uh, US PhD students have not yet finalized so far, because normally this is a, sta a task that uh, uh, so the supervisor normally manage in the first publication this task. So this information, I think, can be useful as well. So the first point is to choose the right journal and uh, how to choose the journal. So for sure we have to check, uh, uh, we have to match the scope and aims of the journal with our work. Then uh, we have also to take into account the relevance of the journal, so the impact factor of the journal the editor and the editorial board, the expected times for review, acceptance, online publication and final publication. This is relevant. So when your PhD defense is approaching, you know, it is really important that you can finalize your work and you can say that, okay, I published two papers or three papers. So if this step takes a lot of time, so this is crucial. So. Uh, also another decision, so if you are working in a European project, uh, uh, you know that uh, this paper has to be published in open access, so another relevant information is the law of access. And so in order to make all this together, you need experience. So in your first, in your first publication, this, uh, the, your supervisor will be really useful to help you to address this task, so try to find the right journal and the right way to uh, choose the journal. So you have, uh, you can see different, uh, just some publishers here, this among the most famous and we used to apply is Elsevier probably, Taylor and Francis, American Chemical Society, and recently you have also different uh, full open access uh, uh, publishers. And then you have the problem because, you no, know, this is continually see, uh, uh, um, receiving email, you no, know, that I, I call the scientific spam, you no, know, that where they um, predation journal ask you to publish your work in their journal, but actually these are not so journal as well. So they normally start in this way. They they take from the database a paper that you publish, they put the titles and say, yeah, we appreciate really much your work, you can submit, but finally the journal is not a good journal, does not have, not have any impact factor, maybe it's not relevant for your work and so on, so you should take care about this. And so sometimes, you know, you're receiving the subject, call for papers in high impact international journal, and this is also quite strange, maybe you check it is actually don't know which kind of impact they have and so on. Uh, so as I told you, choosing the journal, this is for instance in environmental uh, application, water research is one of the most important journal. So if you go on the web page, this actually is a, a, an old slide, you can find you know, the, the aims and the scope, you can find that, uh, with the editor and the editorial board, and uh, does not work? Hmm? Okay. So here you have the impact factor of the journal, so other information. You can also check the most downloaded papers from the journal. Okay. Then you can find the guidelines in the web page. So you, the guidelines for the authors, you have to carefully check. Because if you do not prepare the manuscript according to the guidelines, this will be time-consuming activity even after, because they will send back the paper the editorial staff, and so this will be a time-consuming task. So it is really important to fit the guidelines for author to avoid to, uh, to waste your time. So most, really important is the cover letter in the, uh, when you submit the journal. So normally the cover letter, possibly in, the, in this case, will be your supervisor that will prepare your first cover letter and will submit. So normally the cover letter um, described so the way the your manuscript match 
uh, with the journal scope and aims, and uh, most important, you will try to explain the relevance of your paper and the novelty of your paper in order to make the editor aware about the importance of your work. And uh, then there is the submission procedure, so this is the, the page for submission of Applied Catalysis B Environmental. So as you can see, if it is the first time you have to register in the web page, and uh, after you register, you will be bringing the, this section and you have to submit new manuscript. You have to link to submit your manuscript. A year, you will uh, follow all the steps to submit your manuscript. Uh, okay. Another important matter is the manuscript revision. So in this case, there is a review process. The editor's role and task, reviewer's role and task, and manuscript revision and reply to editor and reviewers. And so when the, the, the journal receives the paper, the editorial staff check normally if you fee, uh, match the scope of the journal and the, the guidelines. If so, they will send it to the editor. And so the editors uh, will receive the manuscript from the editorial. Uh, stuff and so is uh, will evaluate if this your journal your paper is relevant and if it is and if it is sufficiently novel and if so it will make the decision to send the manuscript normally at least to three reviewers okay uh, and uh, according to the comments received from the reviewers uh, about the, the, the manuscript, it will reply you normally after some weeks or sometimes some months, uh, and you reply you if you have a, you are expected to make minor revision, major, major revision. So normally you are asked for major revision, and uh, sometimes can happen that they will reject your manuscript. So this is just we can skip this part. And, uh, okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, eventually, uh, so this is the, about the role of the reviewers. It is really important to review the papers because actually if you do not review paper, nobody publish. So this is really important that we take this t task seriously. And uh, so it is really important this uh, catchphrase that I used to. This, when you write a paper, things like a reviewer, and if you are acting as a reviewer, like you were an author, because you know, this, the, you have to ask yourself if the way you are organizing your paper, actually how this will be evaluated by a reviewer. So you should think this in your mind, and in the same time, the reviewer should think that actually behind that work, there is a lot of work behind the paper, and so just to have respect for the paper. So, uh, there is a really important step for the evaluation report because you can have, uh, the reviewer can ask for form revision and form and for uh, relevant re revision. So, in this case, form revision are easy to apply. Relevant revision, maybe you can have, we can have even some problem to evaluate such a revision. And so, it is a if you have a relevant revision, so this normally refers to methodological approach, novelty, experimental design, paragraphs, framework and contents, and so on, risk, results discussion. And so these are really important revision. And so it is the, you may have some problems. So in this slide, you can see that in blue, the form revision and the red arrow of the relevant revision. So in this case, the revision was H2O2 removed before regrowth dark experiments. If so, please explain the way. So the problem, if they ask you something that you didn't know, you possibly have to repeat the experiment. Okay, so it is really important to reply in the right way. So usable advices is when you make your revision is to use, obviously, diplomacy. Bear in mind that sometimes authors may not have a perfect answer to reviewer a question or remark. Sometimes it's better to agree about some more form revision to make the reviewer more compliant with, about uh, some relevant revision. If possible, I suggest you to avoid to ask explanation to reviewer uh, about his comment because this may extend the review process. 
and so we will delay possible publication. And uh, when you disagree, reviewers' comment remarks, you should support your comment with the relevant data or scientific literature, okay? This is really important. Okay, another important task, if you, uh, as you will have your published, uh, paper published, is to uh, dissemination step. So in order to make the scientific community aware that you published that work. So for instance, normally in our project, we, I don't use Facebook and Twitter, but it is a good option. Normally I use LinkedIn and ResearchGate, so I suggest you to, to promote your, uh, your publication in this way. So here, just the last slide, you can see that we have some special issues ongoing. Maybe you can interest in this, some of these. Two are relevant for advanced treatment of urban wastewater and contaminants of emerging concern. So the first one is on, uh, to be published in Chemiosphere, Elsevier. The deadline is approaching. This is the last deadline because we already extended. So it is the end of this month. Another paper, so the other on the Urban wastewater treatment will be published in water and MDPI open access journal. So the deadline is here is November 30. And then we have uh, this one on the catalyst journal, MDPI as well. The deadline in such a case is July 31 and deal with environmental application of a photocatalytic process. I'm co guesting with Adrian Silvan here. And this one with uh, Despo Fatacatsinos and Norbert Kreuzinger. And the last one is the, that Antonio Arques in, already informed you. You have the chance also to publish on, the, on this uh, journal from Royal Society of Chemistry. The deadline is uh, end of June, but we will try to negotiate an extension of the deadline. So thank you for uh, your attention. And if you have any question, I'm available.